chasing that farewell tour. They don't love you like that. By 17. By 46. Uh, You're trying to get in his head. You feel like you can break LeBron at this point. Uh, we broke LeBron. In game five. So get your ass out of here with that, all right? <laughs> you understand how you got the Cleveland, how you got the Miami bill? You remember That's that? That's true. You broke okay, him in 2010. Okay, so remember that, all right? Fair so enough. stop bringing that up, all right? Fair enough. The 2008 Celtics were one of the most dominant teams of the 2000s. I would even go as far as to say one of the best teams of all time, period. After a summer in which the Boston Celtics acquired All-Stars Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett, the Celtics would transform from a 24-win team to the best team in the league winning 66 games and eventually winning the championship in their first year together. This was once a beloved team, as this was the squad that brought the storied Boston Celtics their first championship since the 1980s. But fast forward 12 years later, and this squad has become so unlikable. And today, I want to explore exactly why that is. But first, let's go ahead and shout out the sponsors of this video, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an app that gets prices from all over the web and puts them on one app so you can get the best prices for all of your event ticketing needs. If you want to go to a basketball game, if you want to go to a concert, wherever you want to go, SeatGeek has you covered. They have color-coded maps with the best seats marked with a green dot, the worst ones marked with red. They have very useful filters and I use them all the time whenever I want to go to concerts or sports games. And thanks to SeatGeek, you guys can use the code BSOULS for $20 off your first purchase. Links will be in the description. And once again, shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the Boston Celtics. So why are they hated so much today? I feel like every time I go on social media, whenever the 08 Celtics get brought up, it's just a bunch of memes and them getting clowned. And from what I see, no one no one really likes them, aside from obviously Boston Celtics fans. I think the root of the problem comes from this squad thinking that they were better than what they actually were. Call it confidence, call it being arrogant, I would say this is the main factor as to why everyone dislikes them so much. While the 2008 season was spectacular, they lived up to the hype, they delivered a championship, that was great, that was phenomenal. For a core that won only one championship together in five years, when they were expected to be a dynasty, they talk a little too high and mighty. For Pierce to come out and say that he's had a better career than Dwayne Wade. Who's the better NBA player? That's easy. I can say that off the bat. That's me. <laughs> if you give me Shaq. If you give me LeBron, they did. They called and, the big and, three. And, and, and yeah, I, we got that late, but like early in my career. If I you, mean, what are you if doing? If you right give now? me these guys early in my career. What, well, let me was, ask you this. What would have been a perfect time for you, Paul? Let's make sure we get this right. When I was 24 years old. Okay. You give me Shaq. When I'm 24, 25, you give me LeBron and Bosch. I'd be sitting on five or six championships. Easy. Easy. I mean,. Come on, Paul. D-Wade won a championship at 24 years old, third year in the league, and was the undisputed best player on the court, put up a Jordan-esque performance, and won finals MVP, and went on to win two more championships with LeBron. Paul Pierce, on the other hand, has only won one championship his entire career, and that was not until he was 30 years old, also not until Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen came onto the team, and to be quite frank, a very solid argument can be made that either KG or Ray Allen should have had finals MVP over Paul Pierce. It just looks so silly and, and laughable whenever he compares and tries to put himself within the same sentence as guys like Dirk Nowitzki or Kobe Bryant or Dwayne Wade when he's really not of that caliber. For Kevin Garnett to say that those Celtics broke LeBron, you can break LeBron at this point. Uh, we broke LeBron. In game five. So get your ass out of here with that, all right? <laughs> you understand how you got the Cleveland, how you got the Miami bill? You remember That's that? That's true. You broke okay, him in 2010. Okay, so remember that, all right? Fair so enough. stop bringing that up, all right? Fair. Do you think you pushed LeBron too far in game five? Because game six far? is unbelievable. You think you <laughs> gave him the eye of the tiger? Pushed him too far? <laughs> Nothing? Man, listen, let me say something to you. The C's, we didn't give a fuck about LeBron. We didn't fear LeBron, and we didn't think that he can beat all five of us. And that's how I felt. He was trying to consolidate because he didn't want the pressure on him. You understand? 
See, you now we're getting somewhere. I mean, yes, I understand that you guys were instrumental in making LeBron leave Cleveland and join D Wade in Miami, but you literally said that he couldn't beat all five of you guys. KG, just just think about that. The same way he couldn't beat all five of you guys? You mean the same way you couldn't beat the 2004 Lakers by yourself, right? And then after that, what what did you do? Two years later, because you couldn't make the playoffs with that team, you requested a trade because the team couldn't surround you with a team that could win a championship. And then you proceeded to team up with Paul Pierce and Ray Allen and got exactly what you wanted. If I remember correctly, it was either going to Boston or teaming up with Kobe in LA, right? And Kobe was on the team that last beat you in the playoffs too. So, so let me ask you KG, did, did the Lakers break you? And also for this whole squad to have a reunion and not have Ray Allen there. I mean, I hated Ray Allen at the time, but I mean, my god you guys, y'all just seem like a squad that's so petty that the Heat formed together and stopped y'all from winning any more championships. Y'all sound so petty. Look, I understand where KG is coming from. I mean, this is Kevin freaking Garnett we're talking about, and that was a heated rivalry, no pun intended. But all I'm saying is these actions and these comments don't really shine the best light on that squad. Couple that with Paul Pierce being an analyst and saying stuff like this. Who's the best wing shooter of all time? The best wing shooter of all time? Ooh. Right now, it's Ray Allen, but it will be Steph. It will be? It will be Steph. He's not a wing, though. Wait. What is Steph? He's a point guard. Uh, he's a wing guy. Give me your star, star five right five. here live on air. Live on air. Magic Johnson. Yes. I'm going Michael Jordan, I'm going Kobe at the three, I'm going Russell at the four, and then you I ain't got... even see Russell play. Hey, Get listen, out he got eleven. Listen, <laughs> listen, I listen see it's, no, play. listen, listen. It's about a you balance. I need a balance. Duncan. I need a balance in the lineup. You played against TBD. I need TV a balance D. in the lineup. I'll then take it. Bill Russell, <laughs> who's your center? My center's hey. And since you are the champion, we have this special trophy for you. Whoa! Close up, please. Oh, no. Oh, Jalen, your trophy is gone. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I think he did that did. on purpose. He did that on purpose. No, I think he did that on purpose. No, the coffee. I think he did that on purpose. No question. No question. Oh, my bad, dog. Oh. Which instantly makes him a Twitter meme. And also remember when Rondo was traded to the Mavs and pretty much just gave up on that team. And now this whole Kendrick Perkins beef. I mean, for, first we had the core and all of their tomfoolery, which is, I guess, more acceptable because they're stars. And now the 2008 Celtic star center, who averaged a whopping seven points and six rebounds, is now also getting into the mix of these terrible media comments that shine the worst light possible on the 08 Boston Celtics. I mean, what? What the heck is going on? For Perk to say, Listen, brother, before I got to Oklahoma City, y'all never got past the first round. Y'all couldn't get past Paul Cazal and uh, Andrew Bynum. Is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. For Kevin Durant to just clown Perk like that on Twitter is hilarious. And also just a side note, I, I thought Perk was one of the most quiet people out there. I definitely did not expect him to have this much social media and just general media presence, just, but that, that's just a side note. But let's also add the fact that general Boston fans just come off annoying. I personally live in Massachusetts, go to Celtics games all the time, been a fan and still am a fan, and just objectively speaking, I, I see why people find Boston fans in general, not just Celtics fans, but Patriots fans, Red Sox fans, Bruins fans, all of us, <laughs> really annoying. Now, I love Celtics fans and their loyalty to the team. It's fun when you're on their side, but I, I, I can definitely see how it looks from the outside. Look, this is what it comes down to. Ever since they're running 08, that squad has come off as a very petty bunch. They've come off as those old heads hating on the newer generation of players, sticking to ideals that are outdated to most people, especially the young generation, and the young generation run social media. 
This is a squad that's definitely over romanticized the run together and while I don't doubt that that core has a strong brotherhood and they have a strong bond, all I'm doing in this video is speaking to how and why they become such an unlikable group. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like on the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more videos like this. But with that being said, I am out. Peace.